Hello everyone and welcome to Quality Old Games. Today we are having part 5 of our Silesian campaign in Eretier Imperium Surrectum um, 0.6.5 and actually I have had quite a bit of difficulties in making of this video because the game crashes. It crashes when I try to finish the turn and that's well rather sad. And yeah, well let's see. This is the final attempt if it will work. So we are having a bit of a population crisis. The settlements are not growing because of culture penalties. So you can see over here buildings, mainly I guess that governor's villa is causing us some troubles so and as the population is not growing we cannot even um, improve the culture of that building so um, yeah because of the issue of crashing I needed to start the campaign again from the same point where I started the previous episode. And this is kind of the moment of truth. Will I be able to actually play the campaign or not? So it seems I'm not the only one having this issue with campaigns. And it has something to do with those free people turn because the game crashes when it's their turn and um, yeah so let's see what will happen I think we need to leave some troops behind okay so the Greek city-states are becoming a bit we more aggressive a good thing that we are sending our army to the west. I think we are not going to use that Faselis as a buffered zone, but we need to capture it again. Oh, Rhodes is actually attacking it, so I think we will strike at the Seleugids there, if the game will function. So, apparently it makes a save at the beginning of the turn, but the new save does not function. So what we are going to do is that um, we are going to check the map and see what other factions have done. And I guess we just need to begin a new campaign, which is a really shame, a shame because I was kind of enjoying this one. But um, yeah, that's rather annoying that the campaign breaks here at least this far I think it's the the greatest flaw in this mod at least in my experience because that's kind of I think the mod is aiming for campaign play and if the campaign becomes unplayable that's a major issue so let's see um, our close areas first so the Anatolians are putting up a fight and then we have this big E Ptolemaic army but it seems that Seleukids are rather weak in this area so I don't know if we moved east or west I think we should be able to relatively easily conquer these areas here and if we can get the uh, population growing here and get some more troops I think we could easily grab some settlements over here as well but let's see uh, the, it seems they are having a peace between themselves in this area so and I guess this army is marching towards us. And if we check Carthage, 
seems they are doing uh, relatively well over here. Syracusans are attacking these Akrogas or whatever. Yeah, Akrogas. And Rome is. duking it out with rebels. Though with relatively slow pace. Okay, they are at war with boy as well. Okay, what about some other major players in Greece? So Achaean League is still alive and kicking and Greek city-states are at war with Elis. It has actually expanded quite nicely if one compares to my Spartan campaign. Sparta has also expanded a bit. The Antigonid Kingdom Kingdom. Well, I don't actually know how they are doing it, since they are at war with Epirus. Yeah. And then in India we have some factions. Uh, I guess they are relatively isolated in here. No settlements. And there is quite a distance to the nearest Bactrian settlements or the... Well, there are some Seleucid settlements a bit closer by, it seems. But this is mostly, it seems, wasteland. And then we have some... Kush settlements over here. And they are at war with Ptolemaic Egypt. Well, that would have been a good thing for us if we continued the campaign. Okay, so apparently that's about this campaign. Let's see about the scroll. So. Yeah, we have not been able to train that much more military production. We have increased somewhat territory. I think we did relatively well. So we had some four or five settlements and at the moment we have, what, over 15 perhaps. Or perhaps a bit less, but still multiplied the amount. Financial, yeah. Population, yeah. And of course these guys are doing better, but we have been doing better than them um, in our area, so... And top... Oh, so our opponents are the top two factions. Well, that's interesting. So what's this faction over here? That's, yeah, the Indian. I don't know. Or remember them. Day. But yeah, so this is this campaign. So let's head to the main menu and start a new one. I guess this will be the final campaign. So I have already played Roman campaign. Um, we had tried that Sparta and um, now the Silicians. I haven't tried Barbarian campaign. So, do we have some British, Briton faction? I should have checked it. There. Egyptians. I guess that's one of the factions that will come to play. I think it was something... Yeah. Trinovantes. Yeah, I guess we are good to go. Or should we take some harder faction? 
Well, I guess we have several episodes time to play in this month still, so I guess we can go with Britons. I doubt we can actually finish the campaign, but let's see how far we can get. So we have, what, two settlements. We are losing money. Surprise, surprise. Uh, are we actually getting any... Well, that's rather nice building. And let's raise taxis. Well, um, what? Well, that's um, a lot of taxis, I have to say. And I think we need actually two production facilities at some point. The garrisons are rather limited. We have a spy, a diplomat, but I guess we just need to put our army to work. And we should actually try to get the army across, but yeah. So let's begin from here. And since they cannot hold out for very long, I think we will just try to inflict some attrition on them before moving onwards. Unfortunately, the population is actually growing in that. Um, I don't think we want to take that extreme mode. Ah, oh, I should have built something more because, well, uh, at the moment <coughs> we are losing money and banking it doesn't do anything good for us. Okay, some dummies. Ah, and the free peoples are attacking us straight away. So they're actually outnumbering us. Oh, well, our army is not actually that great. Well, what can one do but to try one's best. So let's get the battle going and hope that Oh, it's the G. 
general actually leading the attack. Well, that's some good news. See if we could get one throw off. Perhaps a second one. Do some damage over there. Could we actually? Well, I guess not. So it's the slingers here that actually need to win the battle for us. And we are starting to break. Well, that's not... <laughs> A very good start for the Britain's campaign. Well, hmm. Okay. So, we have absolutely no hope of taking any settlements from with that diminished army, so... I guess we will just try that battle again. Even though I have to admit that defeat pains me quite a lot. Yeah. So. Let's try that again. And I think the main thing I can do differently is not to send those skirmishers to flank just yet. Just to keep them behind the infantry line. And when the enemy, all of the enemy infantry engages us, I think um, then we can begin to make those flanking maneuvers. And at the same time, I think... 
I'm not even sure if this is actually the best general we could have in here. Well, that's what we have. So let's see if that strategy will work. And perhaps with guard mode on, we could have a bit more staying power there. And it's nice of the enemy to actually come into close proximity. So if we can fire already that would be great. Actually, the missiles can apparently inflict some damage even over the heads of some of the other units. Yeah, this is going actually relatively well. You guys are not allowed to fire anymore. The warlord of the enemy army is running like a startled goat. Hunt him. Goats make good eating. Indeed they do. Could we actually take the general down? Perhaps not. So they are making a flanking maneuver nonetheless. I guess we need to bring our general to reinforce that flank. a rather devastating hit to the flank. That does not work out either. We'll fight another day. Break off the siege. So, um, perhaps we need to just start the campaign anew. I think this campaign is actually much more difficult than the medium difficulty stated there. I'm not sure if we can actually beat those, but let's try the short one. say that this actually feels the most difficult campaign this far. 
but yeah, let's begin. Or perhaps I should train as many troops as I can. Do we have and we even do have a general so if we just wait for a couple of turns we might have the numbers required and let's begin Bikkus Dikkus That's a nice pun. So what we have... 9 units and they do have... 8. Let's wait. And we are not taking the extreme mode. It seems we have enough difficulties with this one. Did I actually change the general? Because I think I should do that. That one extra star might mean a difference. And then again, as we won't be having money to retrain those troops, should we just have so many of them that we can just survive with as few casualties as possible. Perhaps that should actually be done. Okay. Rip dummies. That spy is not causing us any upkeep, upkeep anymore. And could we actually get rid of this? Well, perhaps that Celtic cultural conversion is good. And we are not making as little money as I was fearing. So perhaps that spy lived quite extravagant life. As getting rid of him improved our financial situation quite drastically. And of course, if the defenders of of Oppidum, Catuvella Unorum don't sally forth, we can actually reinforce the army while we are besieging the settlement. I think we should try to grab at least several settlements here before setting sail to the European mainland. Because our objectives are to 
take down those some tribes or rather merge them with us. I'm wondering if one reason for the loss in that battle was that I was kind of playing it in the style of so-called civilized empires. For example, Romans and Greeks, they are kind of meant to hold the line and then do some maneuvering and win the enemy. But perhaps that doesn't work with the barbarians. Perhaps I should have been a bit more aggressive. I'm not sure. Okay, let's begin the seats. Only three turns and hopefully they are happy to stay the seats because it will make the eventual battle a bit easier for us. So could we speed up things a bit? Because at the moment this is going on rather slow pace. I think one of the main factors contributing that, I don't even know my faction's name, but let's call them Britons. It's easy to play because they don't actually have any opponents in the British Isles. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, that doesn't mean that things are actually easy. Perhaps these bigger factions are making some starting moves which take time. I guess Spartans were at it there. So apparently those cavalry units tend to cost quite a bit. But yeah, a couple of turns and Bikkus Dikkus should surrender, or at least make his last stand. Once again, we are waiting for the Seleucids.
So I guess we will. Um, our next target will be that northern settlement. Let's hope our general gets some nice experience, or rather, command experience from the battle. And next turn. This campaign seems to be a bit yes. slow paced, at least in the beginning. So, especially it seems that Selevkits take forever to finish their turn. Perhaps they can speed up things a bit. Actually, I think that city walls, um, those wooden walls or wooden palisades, make assaulting cities easier. Uh, because when the enemy sallies forth, if the settlement has those wooden walls, they will come out one unit at a time and one can get kind of a surround around the gates. And it's relatively easy to beat the armies that way. But if they don't have the walls, the enemies will come all at the one go, except in for perhaps the enemy general, which, at least in the last attempts, seemed to lead the battle by himself. So, um, yeah. I think one of the main factors contributing to the difficulty with these Britons, or whatever they are, is that there are no walls in the rebel settlements. They have taken, well, minimal attrition. I'm not sure if, if I should actually attack, because then, yeah, perhaps the... We actually have defenders disadvantage at the moment. So, next time, let's make sure that we are the ones attacking. And of course now this cavalry unit offers us quite a bit more of tactical flexibility. over there the general is still fighting it's our cavalry that will break instead of enemy skirmishers. Okay, well, and it seems our front is crumbling there. Um, 
Come on. I mean... This is just... I thought you guys are some fearless barbarians. That will just beat the enemy, but... I guess... I'm wrong. Do something over here. That would be just great. Well, if we look at the positive side of things. I doubt that we are having any upkeep issues anymore. Judith. Judith. Your leader has lost his life. Now we shall see the courage of our people tested. <sighs> Cannot even beat one enemy at a time. I mean, there is something sad in that. the enemy general. Seems at least some of our troops are willing to try their hand at fighting once again, but let's see how far that will carry us.
enemy warlord shows his worth. Nothing! Any of our warriors would die rather than run. Cavalries. Um, okay. Perhaps I should have thought this a bit earlier. So, what's that? Once again, it's the slingers that are actually doing anything in this battle. Breaking nice if we win the battle after this kind of performance um, I guess there is a lesson that can be learned from this and let's just hope that those enemies yeah they will be too late yeah victory rather victory, no how clear victory So, I think we have found the tactics we will utilize in the future. Or at least as soon as we get some money. for a couple of turns before retraining those guys because well we are not actually making that much money but yeah um, I think we will just try to draw the defenders out and then go and grab the city square. Or at least try that one out.
Because our troop quality or at least the morale seems to be just abysmal. so that we can get that retraining going on and after that I think we will strike at Katuvelaunium and try that new tactics out in practice So, perhaps I need to take back a bit what I said about those walls and if the settlement is easier to take uh, with the walls. Because if, if that tactics does work, I think we can capture relatively easily most of the settlements here on the British Isles. So I think one more turn and we are ready for the retraining. So cavalry seems to be in the key role. So basically when playing with barbarians one needs to play it smartly and when playing with civilized empires one can rely on strength which is rather interesting but well I guess that's how it is at least in this game to do I think is that when the battle begins we begin to pull back straight away so that we can lure the enemy as far out from the city center as possible and when the time is right we will just circle out with the cavalry and take the city center and hope that the rest of our army can survive relatively intact long enough for the cavalry to actually take the settlement for us. And perhaps we should send our diplomat further scouting. Where is our next prey? Here. 
Yeah. So, time to go. Oh. I was almost thinking that they do have walls in there, but they don't. It would be even better if we could hide some of our units in some, or rather the cavalry unit in a forest or something like that. I'm not sure if the AI will detect our attempt. Okay, good. And let's see what will happen. Oh, Megas Alexandros. I was for a moment I was wondering who is Megas Alexandros, but I guess we know. So let's try to draw the enemy in here. We are kind of lacking in infantry. Do we have some benefit of terrain. And let's see if we could hide in the forest. So they are all coming. Good. Perhaps we could even give them a bit of a merry chase around the map. Could we perhaps diminish some of the casualties that way? At least I would like to preserve the general. Okay. So General will live and we will actually get the settlement. Some casualties, but I think that's quite acceptable compared to the if we had to fight the whole battle. So you can see some of them are rushing back to the city center, but in front of our ingenious tactics, they just have to give up. Seems that our 
ingenious tactics might not be so ingenious after all. So... Once again, let's train some troops and hope that Bikus Dikus doesn't want to take back Katuvelaunio. But yeah, I think this is everything for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you like the content, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to post comments, give advice, ask questions and so on. Have a great rest of the day. Quality old games. <laughs>